This is Alhambra Investments Question Time. But before we get started today, I have to tell you, Joe Calhoun is in an amazing state of mind because his Celtics won game one NBA last night. But I digress. So, Steve Brennan, how do we progress after that? Sure. Um, I was going to ask Joe, what were the highlights of the week? And not including just the Celtics uh, for the economy and the markets. And uh, and, you know, what do you think of that May jobs report that just came out? And can you give us a DARP update? Uh, dollar and rates paradigm. Where are the dollar? Where are the rates that drive the markets going? Okay. So I've got a couple of things to cover today. First of all, yesterday we were talking about housing and about whether, uh, you know, if, if rates come down, do we get more supply and all that stuff? And I said at some point in there, I said something about there's probably plenty of houses in Chicago kind of implying that maybe Chicago is not in such great shape. Well, I got a call yesterday afternoon from my daughter who happened to see this video uh, because I send her these things. And she is a University of Chicago graduate. She spent eight years in Chicago and she loves Chicago. And by the way, I do too. But she said I had to correct the, the, the correct things here because she's got friends in Chicago who are trying to buy a house. The, the, the situation in Chicago is no different than the rest of the country, just so you know. And apologies, any apologies, all apologies to anybody in Chicago that I offended. Uh, I, I, I love Chicago. My daughter lived in Lakeside for a while. She lived in Pilsen. She lived in Ukrainian Village and uh, and then went to University of Chicago. So uh, we are very much, very much love Chicago. Although I, I will say that I wrote some really big tuition checks to the University of Chicago. But anyway, that's just an update there. I didn't want to didn't make anybody in Chicago mad. I love the place. On the Celtics, I will just say Christophe Porzingis makes the big comeback after being out for 38 days. Uh, you know, 11 points, three blocks in the first quarter. He just was hot last night, man. And and Jalen Brown had his normal, regular hot game. So go Celtics. Uh, just uh, as, as a, a little aside there, if you're a better, if you're a gambler, I'm not. Uh, but if you are. Uh, the winner of the first game of the of the finals uh, wins the series 70 percent of the time. Just so you know. Okay. We like statistics. We like to back things up with statistics. So so how did things go this week? So what, what did we get? Well, I will tell you, it was really kind of an interesting week in the bond market because, man, we had this big bond rally uh, up until today. <laughs> but going into today, we were uh, – where a bond yield, a 10-year bond yield, a 10-year note yield was down about 25 basis points. We got under 4.3 to 4.28 and change yesterday. It's a big move in the bond market. Well, today, not so much because we've, we've given back about half of that today. Uh, the, the note yield is up, a 10-year note is up about 10, uh, 12 basis points today uh, based on the on the employment report, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, it was kind of a mixed week uh, for economic data. It's kind of interesting. The data actually in some ways was fairly strong, and it's interesting to see bonds rally on that. Of course, we always kind of look at the market and say, you know, what are bonds doing? They're telling us the real story. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, but we did get some fairly strong economic data this week. We had, um, we had the, well, it, again, it, it depends on how you look at it. We've talked about this a little bit before, the S&P global PMIs versus the ISM PMIs. Uh, the S&P versions were much stronger. Uh, the services number was a, uh, let's see, what was it? I, I got it here somewhere. Uh, the services number came out at 54.8, which is a really, really hot number. That matched up with the ISM, which also rebounded from below 50 up to 53 and change. That was that looked great. On the manufacturing side, though, you've got a manufacturing number out of the global, uh, the uh, the ISM, or excuse me, the, the S&P Global of 51.3, which is back above 50 and in an expansion. I think that's two months in a row of expansion. But the ISM fell again down to 48.7. So that's a little bit mixed there. We think that the S&P leads, by the way. We're not positive about that. That kind of looks like what it's done in the past. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, the uh, We also got some import and export numbers. The imports and exports were both up, uh, which is a positive sign for the economy uh, if you're importing more stuff. And this is part of uh, what we, we've been talking about, too, about inventories. You know, we've said that inventories have fallen. Uh, inventory to sales ratios have come down at retailers in particular. Uh, and they're going to have to restock. Well, part of that restocking is importing stuff because a lot of the things that we sell in this country are imported. So the fact that imports are going up means that they're doing that some of that restocking. And I think that's uh, a positive sign. 
uh, exports were up even more than imports actually, uh, excuse me, were uh, up less than imports. So you got an expansion of the trade deficit, uh, which is putatively dollar negative, but didn't mean anything all that much uh, in the short term. Uh, what else did we have this week? Uh, unit labor costs came out 4% plus. That's actually a lot better than expected. Everybody was looking for a number more like 4.8. Uh, so that was a better than expected number. Um, but maybe doesn't, uh, and actually is in line with what we saw in the average hourly earnings uh, today, which was up 4.1% year over year. Uh, now, unit labor costs include benefits too, so it's not exactly a, you know, apples to apples, but it's similar. Um, what else did we get this week? Jobless claims were up a little bit, 229,000. Uh, that's still a, historically a very, very low number, but it's it's well up from where the lows were. The lows were actually a little under 200,000. That was last year. Uh, more recently, you've been averaged around 210, so up to 229 is kind of moving in the wrong direction. Uh, the employment report, let's talk about that one. The employment report came out today, 272,000 jobs on the establishment survey, uh, establishment report, which is uh, a survey of businesses. Uh, the household report, though, the unemployment rate ticked up to 4%, and that comes from what's called the household survey, where they actually call people's houses and say, hey, uh, who's working, who's not? Uh, which tells you, first of all, a little bit about the accuracy, because when we say they're calling homes, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're calling landlines. So I'm not sure who they're talking to. <laughs> uh, I don't even I don't have a landline. I don't know a lot of people that do anymore, but whatever. Anyway, that uh, unemployment rate ticking up means that you had a loss of employment in the household survey. And actually, it's pretty deep, minus four hundred eight thousand uh, versus the plus two seventy two on the establishment survey. So that's part of the conundrum we have with these these employment reports they are not very accurate in the short term they get revised extensively and i would expect to see the establishment survey numbers get revised lower not just this month but probably for most of the last year there is a report that came out this week uh, that that details some of those revisions that are going to happen and it comes out of a out of the census the census bureau so we know that those numbers are going to get revised down. We don't know how much. If you look at the household survey, the household survey, if you look year over year, uh, that's saying that the economy only created 376,000 jobs over the last year versus a couple of million in the establishment survey. So there's a gap there that's going to have to be closed. You probably end up seeing a little bit, you know, the household comes up and the, and the establishment comes down and you meet somewhere. But I don't think you're going to meet in the middle because that's too big a gap. Uh, my guess is that the, employ the employment market, the jobs market, is a little bit softer than, than what the uh, headline numbers are looking like here. Traditionally, what we look at are two things uh, when it comes to employment and how the economy is doing. We look at uh, jobless claims, which do tend to usually rise before, uh, before the recession, and we look at the unemployment rate. And remember that unemployment rate does come from the household survey, and that traditionally does rise some before recession as well. Uh, that's where you're going to get. If you get any heads up from the from the labor market, that's where it's going to come from. Um, so what did that add up to? You ended up with, uh, like I said, you had a rally in bonds this week. Bond yields fell. Right now, uh, for the week, uh, I think the uh, the ten year notes down about ten basis points. Uh, no no trends changed in rates to the, uh, this week though. The two year note, which is more sensitive to expectations for the Fed, essentially right now is unchanged. Um, maybe down a couple of basis points on the week. Uh, the uh, the 10 year down some, but you know, obviously reversing a little bit today, uh, but no trends changed here. We were on the verge. If we had gotten a soft report today, we would have we would have been able to say that the short term uptrend in rates is done. As it is, it is right on the cusp. It's very, very close, but it's not there. Same thing with the dollar, by the way. The dollar responding to those lower rates was also falling on the week. And now is rallying pretty good size today. And again, right on the cusp, it got right down to a, a line. We're kind of a line in the sand. We've been watching right around 103 and three quarters on the Dixie. Uh, it got right there and it bounced. And we're 104.7, I think, today. So uh, no trends changed. Uh, nothing's changed. Uh, rates are, are still in an uptrend. Dollars sideways. Uh, nothing to do. It, there's, there's no changes. That wraps up question time for this week. And as always, if you have questions you'd like Joe to answer, put them in the comments section down below.